situation many times worse by completely taking over the student loan business. Hidden inside of the recently passed health care bill, the government passed a complete student loan overhaul where they removed commercial banks from providing loans to students. Now, all students will receive their loans directly from the government at artificially low interest rates. There's absolutely no reason why we, the taxpayers, should be funding college education. And that's what we're doing when they're giving government aid. You know what my college debt was when I got out of school? $1,500. $1,500. You talk about inflation? You talk about inflation? You know what it used to cost me a whole year to go to school? 2000 bucks, And that included room and board. You want to talk about inflation? You're never going to be able to get out from that debt. You're an indentured servant. That's right. That $120,000 you owe, the $80,000, the $40,000, $250,000 if you're a good student that went to law school and you're that much in debt without a job. You have to pay it back. There is no way out. That's the system. One of the unintended consequences of the Wall Street bailouts of 2008 is that now most American students believe that if they take out loans to attend college but can't find a job to pay them back, they will be bailed out by the government and have the loans forgiven. NIA believes this is indeed what will ultimately happen, and therefore it will be U.S. taxpayers who end up paying for the artificially inflated, sky-high tuitions for all college students who can't or choose not to repay their loans. It won't only be taxpayers who suffer. All holders of U.S. dollars worldwide will ultimately pay for everybody's student loans, as the Federal Reserve is likely to print the money to make up for these bad debts, which will lead to hyperinflation and a worthless U.S. dollar. Many students are outright abusing the system. Although government student loans get sent directly to the college or university to pay for a student's tuition, private student loans that are guaranteed by the government usually get sent directly to the student in the form of a check. NIA has been hearing countless reports of students using this free student loan money to buy food, electronics, clothing, jewelry, even cars. The friend of one NIA member used his student loan money to rent and furnish a fancy apartment in Manhattan and didn't even go to college. Even when the loan comes directly from the government and goes straight to the college, there is often thousands of dollars left over each semester after tuition is paid for. This extra money then gets dispersed directly to the student in the form of a check. There is an epidemic in America of students using their student loan money for non-educational purposes and absolutely nothing is being done to stop this from happening. This is complete insanity and all Americans will pay for the madness in the very near future. One NIA member from Kansas City, Missouri has a wife who was one semester short of obtaining her teacher's degree. Instead of borrowing the $8,000 required for tuition at Northwest Missouri State University, she took out a government student loan for $13,000 and used the extra $5,000 to buy a used car. Unfortunately, shortly before graduating, Kansas City closed several schools and laid off 300 teachers. She is now working at a school cafeteria for $8.50 an hour. Although she was required to make monthly payments of $146 for 10 years, after calling the government student loan office and inquiring about their income-based payment plan, they agreed to reduce her monthly payments to zero. With all the modern technological advances the world has been experiencing in recent years, the cost of a quality college education in America should be getting cheaper. It is now cheaper to purchase a plasma television or laptop computer than years ago because the government doesn't subsidize purchases of these products. If there was a true free market in college education, colleges would be figuring out more cost-efficient ways to educate students using modern technology in order to bring tuitions down and compete against each other for the enrollment of students. 
By guaranteeing student loans and providing too much financial aid to students, the U.S. government destroyed the free market in college education. One NIA member who is 50% owner of a private vocational school tells us that he is legally forced to raise tuitions every time the government raises financial aid to students. The government's 90-10 rule mandates that at least 10% of a private for-profit college's income comes from non-federal government sources. Therefore, private for-profit colleges must keep raising tuitions to stay within the 90-10 rule. The government needs to get out of the education business completely and allow private banks to re-enter the market and compete against each other in order to offer loans at reasonable interest rates to students who will have the best ability to pay them back. The reality is, the majority of the students who qualify for loans today from the government would no longer qualify but this will force colleges to either bring down their expenses in order to charge affordable tuitions or close their doors for good. Colleges in America spent $10.7 billion on construction projects in 2009, down from an average $14.7 billion spent per year from 2005 to 2007, but still very excessive. Colleges have recklessly spent to build new libraries, gyms, sports arenas, housing units, etc., all for the purpose of impressing potential students and their families. None of these projects have added anything to the quality of college education in the U.S. Many colleges have very large levels of debt they undertook to build new construction. With most college endowment funds being crushed in recent years due to collapsing real estate and stock market prices, many colleges have very poor balance sheets that won't be able to withstand the slightest drop in enrollments. Jocks! Grown-up jocks! Excuse me, they're coaches now. Hey, coach. Making millions of dollars. For well, what does this have to do with education? What a waste. What a waste. Two-bit universities fielding baseball teams, football teams, basketball teams. For what? To entertain the kids? Yeah, you could do this if you're a very rich society and you have the money to waste. But not during a great recession. And not as the median household income of the country continues to decline and not as you're sending all of these kids to get degrees in worthlessness because that's what these university degrees are, a lot of them. It's a waste of money, it's a waste of energy, and it's an affront to anyone who really wants to think seriously about an education because it has nothing to do with the NCAA. We are sort of seeing the perfect storm. We have seen all this construction in the past few years and if you're a college president, putting your name on a building is quite nice. But you are not there, you probably have moved on somewhere else while your name is on the building, but now the operation and maintenance costs are now falling due. And that was never part of the original bond issue. So now we have all these facilities coming online. Students you know, are being stressed financially. Parents are being stressed financially. Tuition is going up like crazy. Even those schools that are lucky to have endowments, typically they are not having the return they used to have in the old days. So there is just this tremendous you know, culmination of things all coming together that is just going to just stress the system completely. You know, we just saw that there were even riots in UCLA when they saw a 32% increase in tuition. I mean, do you think that we'll start to see a lot more you know, riots and students getting angry at these tuition prices? I would love to see a little more activism on, my, on the part of my students. I think they have been taking this now for such, such a long time that maybe it's just part of the scenery now and they're not, not really worried about it anymore. And I also think a person that's 20 years old, 22 years old, does not realize the implications of not being able to escape student loan debt. When I was in, college, when I was in my high school years at that time, many people were going to college, borrowing the money to go as far as all the way through medical school. And when they graduated from medical school or law school, they would simply just up and declare bankruptcy. But in its wisdom, a few years ago, as you probably know, Congress changed those rules in that you can no longer discharge student loan debt through bankruptcy. And now, even if you happen to make it to Social Security and you still owe them money, they're going to come after your Social Security check, if it exists, which I don't think it will.
With NIA projecting all U.S. interest rates to rise dramatically over the next few years to multi-decade highs, many colleges will likely be forced to double or triple their average tuition inflation rate to 10 or 15 percent just to cover rising interest payments. As the word spreads about this documentary and Americans become educated to the truth, more and more students will wake up to the fact that college education is the largest scam in American history. We are about to reach a point where students say enough is enough and refuse to pay higher tuition prices. There are currently a total of 4,168 public and private two and four year colleges in the U.S. In the near future, as the U.S. dollar begins to collapse and American families are forced to spend more than 30% of their income on food, we expect to see a sharp contraction in the number of colleges in America. NIA conservatively believes 20% of American colleges will close by the year 2020. Of the colleges that remain open, NIA projects an average decline in enrollments by the end of this decade of between 15 and 30 percent. In fact, enrollments by American students in each college could decline by as much as 50 percent, with Chinese students using their soon-to-be strong yuan to become educated in the U.S. and price American students out of the market. NIA also projects for most colleges to reduce their faculty sizes by between 25% and 40%, which will mean larger class sizes and a further decline in the quality of education. If we were doing such a wonderful job and producing such geniuses coming out of universities, you think we'd be in the problems that we're in now. Do you think that we would be among the most unhealthy nation of people in developed nations? Do you think that we would be gobbling down junk food? Do you think that we would be prescription drug addicts as a society? Do you think that we would be in the greatest recession? that's heading toward the Greatest Depression? Do you think we would be in Iraq and wasting trillions of dollars fighting losing wars in Afghanistan and now in Pakistan? Do you think that we would have presidents and senators and congressmen and legislators of such low mentality that we have now? Do you think that we would have the rampant greed of the white shoe boys on Wall Street if the universities were turning out anything of quality considering the trillions that are spent and the tens of millions that are educated? By their deeds you shall know them. Look what American universities have produced. The simple truth is, any American high school student who has any savings put away that they are planning to spend on college would be much better off simply investing this money into physical silver. A senior in high school with $30,000 in savings who buys physical silver today will likely have enough money to buy the median U.S. home four years from now, while all of their friends will be graduating college with no job or money to buy a house, but will be stuck with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and a worthless piece of paper called a college degree. How worthless is education? Count the ways in my worthless college degree. Worthless. That's what a college degree is worth. Here's my worthless law degree. Equally as worthless. Here's my worthless license to practice law. Worthless. Here's my worthless computer science degree, also worthless.
That's the value of education.